in this podcast, before you even step a foot into your your local tackle shop, watch this podcast because this is about before you even get your first ever piece of fishing gear. So let's get started. Now, what I mean by this is the following. What I see a lot of moms when they take their kids, guardian, insert category, I see this all the time. I used to fish this public park and it happens. Mom goes, oh, let's just grab some fishing gear. They'll spend 30, well, what probably looks to be 30 to 50 bucks on stuff. And they'll just take that out on the water. They'll fish with that. Even though it has, n- it's the worst kind of stuff you could use at that body of water. And it makes you cringe. So this podcast is geared toward those people who never even spend a day fishing, want to take their kid out tonight. They find a nice park. So let's go with it. Now, this podcast is meant with a specific intent in mind. This is meant for the people who are just getting into fishing, have a particular spot they want to go to. They like it's a little park near their house, it's a beach. They have somewhere in mind that's like, all right, we can take our family here. It's a nice little outing. It'll be a fun time. It's a nice little place to have a picnic. They'll have something like that in mind. That's what this podcast is intended for. So, with that whole setup there, how do you approach this place? You walk, my advice, before you even buy your first ever piece of fishing gear, my advice is the following. You go and you walk to set park, beach, etc. And you learn that place as much as you can with your eyes. This is coming from someone who used to fish a lot of clear water and you could see a lot of stuff. And knowing as much stuff about this place as possible is going to determine what to actually buy at the shop. Or as I like to put it, where are you fishing? The most important question. The more you understand where you are fishing, the better you will have you know, the better your experience will be on the water. So let's so let's more or less walk into it. I walk up to a random body of water. I don't even have a rod in my hand, right? I'll give you actually a good example. I started fishing this little creek near my apartment right here um this creek was about three feet wide no actually wasn't probably three feet wide it was maybe more like 10 to 15 feet wide so it wasn't a very large creek it was shallow you could and it was clear so you could see all the way down to the bottom which is good it allows you to know what's there um, you could see little largemouth bass in there. I saw a blue crab in there. You could see different kinds of the other thing. You could see other. You could see different kinds of grass. This is something you can do with or without the water clarity. You can pick up and look for things that would be considered habitat or how much habitat there is. That's the that's the other important question. Um, so, for example, there was little bits of, like, pond moss in there. There were some reeds on the sides of this creek. So, there was some stuff to work with. It was a cement bottom. So, it was more or less flat, carry the same depth. So, that already gives me a couple of clues. I can get away with fishing lighter gear and fish around that moss stuff. Versus, if you had, if the moss was completely covering the entire place... I would need heavier gear to get in there. Just by knowing, not even the species of fish, just by knowing what the setting is that you're about to walk into, that is going to give you answers before you even walk into a Walmart and buy your first set of gear. That is the very important question. The other thing, or take a beach example. for um, the Take a beach. You'll notice that a beach will have Does the beach have rocks near it? Does the beach not have rocks near it? Things like that. The heavier the structure, the heavier the gear you need for the area. It's a very good determining of how um, how rough is the water. That's another good one. If you're fishing a really quick river, you're going to need heavier gear to keep your gear on, like, if you're fishing the bottom, to keep your gear on the bottom. So, the better... My point, going back to this, I'll go back to even several times. The better you can answer the question of where you are fishing the better your experience will be. It is that simple. It is super simple. And the, just answer the question of where in your head as you're walking around that lake 500 times. You're walking around that beach 
500 times because that is going to determine what gear you're going to need. So, for example, I have seen moms and kids, they'll bring bulky, what looks to be like bulky, typical cheap saltwater gear, to a little pond where it was super clear water for largemouth and bluegill. It's that kind of gear would scare clear water largemouth. Like I said, where are you fishing? Are you fishing a place that usually has clear water? Or are you fishing a place that usually has muddy water? That's another tip. You're going to need different gear regardless of the one you fish. I just fished Toledo Bend with a friend over spring break. It was decently muddy. It wasn't like chocolate milk color water, but it was pretty murky. And I was throwing techniques I never would I never would normally throw because I'm used to super clear water. That's a big piece. By knowing that, you now have that's a very good distinctor of what you're going a distinction of what you're going to need. And understand, none of this has to do with species because the the other thing I have in mind is if you're just getting into fishing, I am assuming you don't even know what species of fish you even want to go for. I am assuming you just found a cool lake, like I said back in the beginning of this. You found that cool lake that's going, "Ooh, this is a nice place to take my family out for a little trip." You go and you want to know what is there. Um, if you cannot go there in person, Google Earth is a great tool, but Google Earth will still not have some of these answers. If it's clear water, you can learn a lot more by just going there. Other important thing, before I log out of this podcast, um, bait fish, forge, that is a very important thing. Now, granted, some clues, like looking inside a large mouth to see if the color, see what color is jaws from what it ate is obviously something that you cannot do without actually catching a fish. But there are certain ones, like in clear water, or you can look along the shore and see what the wildlife is there. And that will usually gauge what you're trying to look at. You can see, uh, okay, at this lake, I see these dislike fish. They are probably bluegill. And at that, that being said, I now have a species of bait of possible forage fish in this lake that I can go work off of. I can go imitate. I now have answers of what I need to go buy. You see a small catfish in the lake. You can imitate catfish. You see high, you see docks. You can figure out how to fit. You can ask people how to fish around docks. So just by just knowing what is on the lake is something so simple, and yet it will narrow everything in that massive tackle shop down to here. And um, and then basically, on top of that, um, when you're looking at, like, bait fish and stuff, actually, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, so when you're just looking at, just by just knowing bait fish, little glass minnows, you, if you could see little glass minnows cruising around the little tadpoles or little minnows that big, you that could be what they're feeding off of. And you might want to match it accordingly. Um, near the shore, if you see things like little frogs, if you see like little salamanders, fish might eat those. I've seen largemouth eat a dragonfly before. It is cool, because they will a three-pounder will jump out of the water for a dragonfly. Thing, a dragonfly is something that most people are like, wait, a fish would eat that? Yes. And good size fish will eat it too. So, even if it's so, you don't even have to look inside the water for some of this stuff. You can look out and around you. And now you can go into it. Now, let me bring it all into a nice, clear example to recap everything. You have now in your head, you have now walked around this park, wherever this may be that you're trying to look at. And now you have as much of an answer. So, I'm going to give you a good example. I walk into a tackle shop now. I tell the person, I am going to be fishing this place that has a relatively light amount of vegetation, but there's and there's some open water there as well. It's relatively clear water. I can see bait fish about I can see little fish about two, three inches, three and a half, whatever you see. Um what and then I can a um it's relatively flat in depth. And that gives you an idea. And then you can ask the person at the shop saying, what should I do for a scenario like that? Which, I mean, I'll also cover in another podcast later on in this series. 
But as of right now, that gives you a very good mental image of what you need to go get. So I, let me clarify this. I'm going off scenarios for this case because this is a multi-species channel. I'm not targeting about fishing any specific species because also, if you don't know how to fit, if you don't know what you're fishing for, there's no point to it. And that's the other piece. Some And sometimes you can even visually see sport fish. That being said, you can go ahead to the tackle shop. You can describe the sport fish, and they could probably help you out saying, oh, that's a largemouth bass. This might be some stuff you might want for that. They can walk. They can help walk you through the shop. Um, yeah, so that is all good stuff to have in mind. Next podcast, I will be covering the gear you will need for certain general scenarios but this more or less covers it this more or less gives you the spe- location specific things to think about before you hop on the water with actual fishing gear so the bet and so do not waste a penny of gear i have done that i have i'm guilty of where i do not know what i'm doing i do not know what i was doing and i would spend th- hundreds of dollars not knowing what I was doing and buying gear that I did not need for a particular spot. If you walk up to the place, you see everything just with your eyes, it will turn that error from, say, $100 to about 50 or 30 bucks of air money. That is a big chunk, especially if you're not trying to put that much money into the hobby. So now going back to it, next podcast, I'll be covering about general scenarios like like general light tackle salt water general light tackle fresh water things like that to go over what you need to get to get started on the water all right guys take care have a nice day